Good morning. It is Saturday and this is Power Yoga Day. Normally I would bring this to you from the treasure box, but we have gray weather today. Gray weather threatening snow. Arrowhead already has some, Crestline has a little dabble. So not knowing what the weather was going to be like exactly this morning, I decided to play it safe and do this from home. So today we are doing yoga from my home studio. And today we are continuing our study of the Vitam Mudra, which is the gesture of vital energy. We take this mudra when we want to balance our energy so that we have the energy we need to do the things we want or need to do. We can also take this mudra when we want to relax the lower back. So I would like to invite you to join me at the mat. I have my cuppa. I'm going to take one last sip and then I'm going to put it aside. So if you have a block or a bolster to sit on to begin our morning meditation to start our practice, I invite you to do so. It's nice to sit up on a block or a bolster because it helps us to open up the hips. So when we can open up the hips, we can make more free flowing the energy through our body going up and down our energy centers or our chakras in the body. So it also allows the free flow of air opening up all of our structures through which our air passes. So I invite you to do so every time you meditate, raise up those hips. You can sit down if you want to directly on the mat. It's just really nice to start off this way. Notice how wide I can get my knees when I'm able to lift my hips up so that my knees can drop down nicely to the mat. So let's take that Vatam Mudra. So what you wanna do is cup your hands like you're creating, your hands are like mittens, your fingers don't separate, they come together, your thumbs come against your hand. Bring your shoulders down, bring your elbows down against your ribs, and then turn your hands slightly like you're cupping a ball at the bottom. So imagine that you have a nice energy ball here and your hands are around that ball. And what we do is we inhale, and when we inhale, we bring our hands apart. And when we exhale, we bring them together. So imagine you have this growing energy ball that is nourished by your breath. As you inhale, it gets larger. And as you exhale, it comes back. Inhale, widen. Exhale, bring it back. Inhale, expand. Exhale, bring it back. Inhale, expand. And exhale, bring this back. Inhale, expand. Exhale, contract. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. So as you continue to inhale and exhale and take that gesture, let's talk a little bit about values that it lines up with. One of the values, one of the, the, the yamas that it lines up with is brahmacharya. Brahmacharya being the value that teaches us to uh, conserve our energy or budget our energy or balance our energy so that we will have the energy that we need for the priorities that we want to meet. So the Vatan Mudra reminds us also to live that value of brahmacharya. 
And we're reminded that we want to spend our energies on the things that we value the most. So it's also a reminder to be attentive and careful about where you spend your energy, where you expend your energy. Do you waste it on things? Do you overuse your energy? Do you not make time available for the things that are most important to you? The Brahmacharya lines up with the Vatan Mudra in this way. Another nice analogy, uh, especially for people that might have chronic illness or disabilities, who know that they have to balance things in life in ways that others that don't have these problems or difficulties experience. They call it balancing the spoons. You know, you only have so many spoons and you can only have so many up in the air at one time. And so this changes how you use the energy. Do you know when you need to back away from something? Do you know when you need to ask for some help? Do you know when you need to decline an opportunity? Do you know when you need to say, I'm not gonna do it so intensively, I'm gonna give myself the opportunity to rest, for example, I'm gonna listen to my body. So this is a wonderful mudra to remind us of that importance of listening to the body, of honoring where we are right now, of honoring our mental and physical wellness and the energies that we have that promote the wellness of, of our whole being. So this is a really great mudra to remind us of what our core values are. And we talk a lot of times about living life off the mat, similar to what we do on the mat. So this would be a perfect example of taking a lesson that we take on the mat out into the great world that we live in. So let's do a couple more breath cycles. Inhale, expand your energy ball. And exhale, bring it back in. Inhale, expand. Exhale, bring it back in. One final one, inhale, expand. And exhale, bring it back in. And go ahead and release that new dress. So today I invite you to pay close attention to your own energy. As we go through this power practice, you may find you want to take modifications and that those modifications make, make it easier for you, easier for you to breathe, easier for you to engage in proper alignment, and easier for you to enjoy this practice because yoga should be an act of joy. There should not be pain. There should not be, uh, I, I don't subscribe to the no pain, no gain theory when we're talking about yoga. We are talking about something that should bring wholeness and wellness, and at the end of your yoga practice, you should feel deeply satisfied, invigorated, and relaxed at the same time. So whatever you need to do to make this practice most meaningful to you today, I invite you to do so in the spirit of the Vitam Mudra. I'm gonna move my blocks out, and we're gonna begin our linking of breath with movement. So inhale our hands out and up, Exhale them out and down, drawing the crown of your head up to the ceiling. Inhale out and up. Exhale out and down. Inhale out and up. Exhale out and down. Let's do a little bit of breath work, period. Let's take our hands on top of our shoulders and just focus on lifting up the heart center. Maybe you even want to take your finger, your, your thumb, loop up your elbows, lift up your heart center. And then I want you to just focus on expanding your diaphragm as you breathe in and out. Exhale. Perhaps you can see mine on the camera. Inhale, expand. Exhale, draw it back in. Inhale, expand. Exhale, bring it back in. One more inhale, expand. And exhale, drop your hands down. So let's remove our bolster or our block. And we're going to start right in with some spinal warm ups this morning. 
I'm going to move my blocks in either direction because we will, I'm going to use them to demonstrate initially when we go into our sun salutation. So taking your tabletop position, I would like you to make sure that your hands are stacked perfectly underneath your shoulders, so directly underneath, your knees directly underneath your hips. Draw your belly button into the spine. Draw your heart center forward. Draw your shoulders back. Hopefully you have observe these micro adjustments on the screen. Just sit here for a moment, breathing in and out, diaphragmatic breathing, feeling the strength of this nice, strong and straight spine. In yoga, we are always seeking to create space. And the way that we do this is by drawing our crown away from our shoulders. So when we do that, we're creating these opposing forces. And when we draw the shoulders down and onto our back, as we draw our crown forward, we automatically engage our abdominal muscles. And the abdominal muscles are absolutely key for keeping your back healthy. The core is always working when we do yoga and really frankly should be working in all the life activities. Now we're gonna move into some cow and cat maneuvering. So inhale into cow by dropping the belly, draw, drawing the shoulders back and down, lifting up your heart center, lifting up your sit bones. On your exhale, draw the belly button in, round your shoulders, lift your, your back up to the sky as high as you can get it. Inhale, reverse that, dropping the belly, drawing the shoulders back and down as you open up your heart center and your neck. Exhale, reverse that. Tuck the tailbone down as you curl your spine up to the ceiling and cat. Inhale into cow, drop the belly, draw the shoulders back and down. Exhale, reverse that order, moving into cat. Once more into cow, drop the belly, lift up the sit bones. And exhale, drawing the belly button in as we move into tabletop again. Moving into sunbird, lift up our left leg. So when we lift up our left leg, we want it at hip height. We want the toes pointed towards the floor. Initially, I just want you to focus on a straight spine, drawing the belly button in, keeping your hips squared off as your toes are pointed down, using the strength of your hamstrings to lift this leg up and down. Notice it's like it's pivoting. The hip stays absolutely stationary. Then take your right arm out in front of you reaching your right arm as far as you can forward, your right hand forward, your left heel backwards as far as you can. Continue to draw the belly button in so that you don't create a sway back of your lower spine. Take a nice inhale. Exhale. Inhale again. Exhale, drop your hand, drop your knee, lift up your right leg. Same thing on the other side. Using the strength of your hamstrings to lift up this leg. Drawing the belly button up again so that we don't have a swayed lower back. Draw the crown of the head forward as you draw your shoulders back. And again, as this leg goes up and down, it's, the hip is not moving. So it's like I'm hinging here, pivoting out of the hip. All right, then take the left hand forward, reaching the left hand as far forward as you can, right heel back as far as you can. Continue to draw that belly button in so that your back is nice and straight. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Fully exhale. One more inhale. Exhale, drop the left hand, drop the right knee. Let's do this again on the left side, lifting up left foot. Right hand. Exhale. Let's take a nice inhale. Exhale, bring elbow to knee. Inhale, open them up. Exhale, bring elbow to knee. Open them up. Exhale, bring elbow to knee. Open them up. And then exhale, move into awkward airplane, moving your left foot forward as you bring your right hand back, creating a letter T with your body. Continue to draw the belly button in. Keep your whole body straight, focusing on drawing your left foot more forward and keeping your left arm Make sure your left leg and your right arm on the same plane. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, bring the left foot back, right hand forward, drop them both. Take an inhale into cow. 
Exhale into cat. Inhale into a straight spine again. Taking up your right leg and your left arm. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, bring knee to elbow. Inhale, open them up. Exhale, bring knee to elbow. Open them up. Exhale, bring knee to elbow. Open them up. And then exhale, open up into awkward airplane. So once again, your left, your right leg, your toes are pointing forward, your legs seeking parallel, parallelity with the floor. <laughs> Same thing with your left arm, creating like a cross with your body. Take a nice inhale. One exhale. Inhale. And then exhale. Bring left leg back, right hand forward, and drop them down. Inhale into cow. Exhale in to cat. One more inhale into cow. Exhale into a flat spine. It's always nice to take some cleansing breaths in between to reset when you're doing a lot of exertion, especially when we do it so early on in the routine. Take your left foot back, right hand forward on your inhale. On your exhale, reach back, grab your right ankle and kick, or your left ankle, I'm sorry, kick your left foot into your right hand as we create a nice arch in our back, opening up the heart center. One more inhale, exhale, release that and drop your left knee down. On the next inhale, bring your left arm up, right foot back. Exhale, reach back, grab your right ankle with your left hand, kick your hand, your foot into your hand, opening up the heart center. One more inhale. Exhale, release it, and down. Inhale, into cat, cow. Exhale, into cat, whoo. Inhale, into cow, and exhale, into the flat spine. And then we're gonna take one more fun pose. So you're gonna balance on your right knee and on your right hand. I'm gonna reach back and grab your left foot with your left hand, and you're gonna open up into tiger. So you might need to do some hand adjustments to make, make that work. So this is sort of like dancer pose, only we're on our knee and on our hand and just continue to lift that left leg up as high as you feel like going. So this really requires some balancing, some engaging of your core muscles, engaging of your lower root lock, engaging of your navel lock, and just keep on lifting up, breathing in and out, Take one more inhale, and then exhale, release that back down. Now we're gonna take that on the other side. So balancing on your left side, left knee, right hand, reach back and grab your right foot. It, it helps if you start with your knee still on the floor. <laughs> and then on your inhale, start to lift up. Remember to engage your root lock, engage your navel lock, draw your shoulders onto your back, as you lift up that right leg. Take another nice inhale. And then exhale, release that back with control. Inhale into cow. Exhale into cat. Inhale into cow. Exhale into cat. Sit back on your toes. So tucking your toes, sitting back on your knees. And let's just sit up for a moment, stretching out our feet. And so your back should feel nice and warmed up now. It's important when you start in a yoga routine, no matter what intensity of practice you may have planned for your, for your session, that you take the time to warm up your body. So we start off with... Uh, poses that don't involve so much extension. So we start off with poses that engage the core, that strengthen the middle of the body, that use flexion. Okay, let's stand up. So moving into Tadasana, I also like to warm up the body using some sun salutations. 
a lot of times I will start off my practice and I do a slight ca uh, camera adjustment to make sure that the top of my body is very visible. A lot of times I will use the blocks as I'm warming up the body so that we have enough space and enough support so that we can move into good alignment and have good breath while we go through the practice. So I will start my first sun salutations using the blocks, but then I will not use them after the second set. And we're going to build our routine today using the sun salutations. So inhale our hands out and up. Draw the crown of your head up. Draw your hands up. Make as tall of a body as you can. Allowing your tailbone to tip down just a little bit. Drawing your shoulders down as you draw your belly button in and underneath the rib cage. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, creating drawing your hands down as you maintain that length in your spine. Inhale, hands out and up. Let's create that wonderful spinal extension again. Exhale, bring your hands down. Inhale, bring your hands up. And then exhale, let's swan dive forward. Perhaps start, you bend your legs. Maybe the backs of your legs aren't very open yet. Maybe your hips aren't very open yet, and that's okay. Inhale into a flat spine and exhale down. Inhale, reverse swan dive all the way up. And exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale. Exhale the hands down. Inhale them up. And then exhale, swan dive forward, drawing your heart center down. Hands to the floor, drop the crown. Inhale into a flat spine. It helps when you press your hands against your legs. Exhale down and grab your blocks if you have them and would like to use them. Take your right knee back or right foot back, sorry, and drop your right knee. Take your blocks and place them underneath your shoulders. Inhale the heart center up as you move your hips forward. Exhale, remove those blocks. Place your hands down and move back into a plank pose. Hold this plank for three breaths, drawing the crown of your head forward as you draw your knee, your heels back. Keep your hips up high. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, drop your knees, elbows into the ribs, drop your chin and chest and inchworm. Inhale forward and then rise up into low cobra. Exhale, tuck your toes, moving back through child's pose. We will rise up into downward facing dog. In downward facing dog, you can keep a nice deep bend of the legs to begin. And maybe you start pedaling your legs out. Start feeling the lengthening of your hamstrings. Lift all the way up on your tippy toes and lower down, bending your legs, take a nice inhale. Exhale, bring knee up to nose as you bring it forward, your right foot forward and drop your left leg. Grabbing those blocks again, placing them underneath your shoulders. Inhale, your heart center up as you move your hips forward. Exhale, take left foot forward to join the right. Inhale into that flat spine and exhale down. Start to feel the difference as you open up your body. Inhale, reverse swan dive all the way up. And exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, exhale the hands down, inhale them up, exhale swan dive forward, drop your crown. Inhale into a flat spine, exhale down and take your left foot back again. Grabbing your blocks, they're right underneath your shoulders. Inhale your heart center up as you move your hips forward. Exhale, drop those blocks. Move back into a plank and let's take a plank on our right side. So this is a one-armed plank. Place our left hand on our hips, on our left hip. Draw the shoulders in alignment with one another by pulling the shoulder blades together. Lift up the hips. Take a nice inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more inhale. Exhale, take our left hand down to the floor, pivot to the other side. 
Now we are balancing on our left arm and our left foot, bringing our right hand to our right hip, drawing our shoulders together on the spine. Or rather near the spine, lifting up our hips, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. One more inhale, exhale. Moving back into regular plank, take a nice inhale. Exhale, drop our knees, elbows into the ribs, drop chin and chest and move forward. Inhaling up into low cobra. Exhale, tucking our toes, moving back through child's pose and rising up into downward facing dog. Are your legs able to straighten out a little bit more this time? Perhaps as you're warming up your body, they are. Take whatever motions you need to, if it's pedaling, if it's moving the hips back and forth, whatever makes this more enjoyable to you. Inhale, take the left foot forward, drawing knee to nose and drop our right knee down. Grabbing our blocks, inhale, the heart center up as we move our hips forward. Exhale, inhale, and then exhale, bring right foot forward to join the left. Inhale into a flat spine and exhale down. Inhale, reverse swan dive, rising all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Take a moment to assess how you feel in your body. We talked at the beginning of class about the need to balance our energies, to have vital energy, the energy that we need to do the things that we want or need to do. Do you have vital energy right now? Let me take a sip of some liquid. I try not to have a dry throat when I'm doing a practice, but it does happen. So now I am not gonna use the box. I'm gonna remove them. Our next round of sun salutation, we are going to continue to do it with the low lunges. You can take a high lunge if you prefer that. Take a nice inhale. Exhale the hands down, inhaling the hands up. Exhale, swan dive forward, drawing the heart center down as you drop your crown. Inhale into a flat spine, exhaling down, taking our right foot back and dropping our right knee. Inhale our hands up. Exhale, move our hips forward as we draw our shoulders down, lifting up the heart center. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, circle the hands down, move back into plank pose, lower. Knees, elbows in, chin and chest, and into warm inhale up into low cobra. Exhale, tuck the toes, moving back into downward facing dog. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, take the right foot forward, drop our left knee. Inhale, our hands up. On our exhale, move the hips forward and lift up the heart center, drawing the shoulders down. Inhale, exhale, circle the hands down, bring left foot forward to join the right. Inhale into a flat spine and exhale down, drawing the heart center down. Inhale, reverse swan dive all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, exhale the hands down, inhale our hands up. Exhale, swan dive forward, drawing the heart center down, dropping your crown. Inhale into a flat spine, exhale down, taking our left foot back and dropping our knee. Inhale, our hands up. Exhale, draw the heart center up, shoulders down as we move the hips forward. Exhale, circle hands down, left foot back to join right in plank, dropping knees, elbows in, chin and chest down and inchworm. Inhale into low cobra. Exhale, moving back into downward facing dog. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, take our left foot forward, drop our right knee. Inhale, our hands up. Exhale, moving the hips forward as we lift up our heart center. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, circle the hands down, tuck our toes, bring right foot forward to join the left. Inhale into a flat spine and exhale down. Inhale, reverse swan dive all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Take a beautiful inhale. Exhale down. So our next set of sun salutations we're gonna be moving into will be high lunge version. So take a nice inhale. 
Exhale the hands down. Inhale our hands up. Exhale, swan dive forward, drawing the heart center down, dropping our crown. Inhale into a flat spine. Exhale down and take our right foot back in that high lunge. Inhale the hands up. Exhale as we draw the shoulders down and lift up the heart center. Bend your left leg more deeply, stretching out your right toe, perhaps looking up at the ceiling or the sky. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, circle your hands down, left foot back to join right, lower, Chaturanga Dandasana, hover over the floor before you lower entirely, and then inhale into upward facing dog. Exhale, draw the belly button in, roll over the toes as we move into downward facing dog. Take a nice inhale. Fully exhale, move your hips back, lifting them up high in the air. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, take your right foot forward. And inhale, rise up. Exhale, lift up the heart center as you bend your right leg more deeply, opening up your left toe. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, circle your hands down, left foot forward to join the right. Inhale into a flat spine and exhale down. Inhale, reverse swan dive all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale. Exhale the hands down, inhale your hands up, exhale swan dive forward, drawing the heart center down, dropping your crown. Inhale into a flat spine, exhale down and take our left foot back. Inhale, rise up into that high lunge. Exhale, draw the heart center up, shoulders down as we bend our right leg more deeply. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, circle the hands down. Right foot back to join left, lower Chaturanga Dandasana, hover before you drop down. Inhale into Upward Facing Dog. Exhale, moving back into Downward Facing Dog. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, move our hips up and back as we draw our shoulders away from our ears. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, take left foot forward. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, bend our left knee. More deeply, opening up that right hip, lifting up your heart center. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, circle the hands down, right foot to join the left. Inhale into a flat spine and then exhale down. Inhale, reverse swan dive all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. So now let's do the next challenge with our sun salutations. I want to do one breath, one movement. So I'm just going to say inhale, exhale. And as I say, inhale, exhale, knowing how to do these sun salutations now, you move through the sun salutation, but I'll start you off with inhaling our hands overhead. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Moving back into lunge. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Now we are at Tadasana again. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Inhale, rising all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. So that might have felt really fast to do it that way. But my hope is for you when you do your home practice that you get used to the inhalation and exhalation with the whole process of doing the sun salutation. It's a whole body workout. And our life dharma or goal might be that we do 108 of those at some point, like a pilgrimage 
108 is a sacred number. So can you imagine doing 108 sun salutations? So think about how we would balance our energies to make that happen. Amazing. Let's do one more set, but I'll talk you through the inhales, exhales, and the movements. Inhale our hands up. Exhale, swan dive forward. Inhale into a flat spine. Exhale down and take your right foot back. Inhale, rise your hands up. Exhale, circle down. Inhale, take left foot back to join right and lower, try to round into nothing. Inhale into upward facing dog. Exhale, moving back into downward facing dog. Take an inhale. Exhale, take right foot forward. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, circle your hands down. Inhale, take left foot forward to join the right and move into flat back. Exhale down. Inhale, rising all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale. Hands overhead. Exhale, hands, heart center down. Inhale into a flat spine. Exhale down and take left foot back. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, circle hands down, moving our right foot back to join the left. Inhale, exhale, lower, chaturanga nasana. Inhale into upward facing dog. Exhale, moving into downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale, left foot forward. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, circle down. Inhale, right foot forward and moving into a flat spine. Exhale down. Inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. So feeling that bigger, feeling that wonderfulness, let's move into some more powerful poses. So let's inhale our hands up. Exhale, hands to heart center and take our right foot back in warrior one. Inhale our hands up in warrior one. Make sure that your hips are in the same direction as your heart center. Heel is on the floor, bending your left knee more deeply. Drawing your heart center up as you draw your shoulders down. Maybe put your hands together. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, draw the belly button in. Inhale. Exhale, open up into warrior two. Make this as wide a stance as you can, drawing your shoulders together, looking out over your left fingertips. Take a nice inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, reversing back into Peaceful Warrior, maybe curling back towards your right leg. Take a nice inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, moving into extended side angle. Hands placement anywhere that you want. Raise your right hand up to the ceiling initially and draw your shoulder down. And then draw your right arm alongside your right ear. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Take one more inhale. Exhale, circle our hands up. And then Circle our hands back down, surrounding our left foot. Bring our left foot back to join the right. Lower chaturanga to nothing. Inhale into upward facing dog. Exhale into downward facing dog. Let's take a twist in our dog. Move our hips back as far as we can. And then take our left hand and reach for our left leg, our right leg, or our right ankle. Curl into that as you twist, looking underneath your right shoulder. Continuing to push away from the floor with your right hand. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, place your left foot hand back, moving back into that downward facing dog again. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, bend your knees. And then on your inhale, hop up to your feet. Inhale into a flat spine and exhale down. Inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Take our left foot back into warrior one. Again, your hips moving in the same direction as your heart center, lifting up your hands, bending your right leg deeply, lifting up the heart center, drawing the belly button in. Maybe you place your hands together.
Take a nice inhale. And then exhale, open up into warrior two. So in warrior two, taking as wide a stance as you can, perhaps looking out over your right fingertips. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And then on your exhale, let's move into that peaceful warrior. Take a nice inhale. And then exhale, moving into extended side angle, dropping our right hand to the floor, initially left hand overhead. Draw your shoulder down and then draw your left arm alongside your left ear. Take another inhale, exhale, circle your hand down, and rise back up into warrior two. And then exhale, circle your hands down on either side of your right foot, moving back into plank, lower chaturanga dandasana. Inhale into upward facing dog. Exhale, moving back into downward facing dog. As we are in our dog, take a nice inhale. Exhale, moving your hips back, extending your dog as far back as you can. And then take your right hand and reach for your left ankle. Looking underneath your left armpit. I have a chain in my mouth. <laughs> Pushing the floor away with your left hand. Still take a nice inhale. Exhale. Inhale, bring your right hand out in front of you. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, bend your legs. Inhale, hop up to your hands. Inhale into that flat spine, exhale down. Inhale, rising all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, the hands down. Inhale, your hands up. Exhale, swan dive forward, drawing your heart center down, drawing the crown down. Inhale into a flat spine. Place your hands on the floor and then hop back into your palakasana or your, or your plank. Then lower chaturanga dandasana. Inhale into upward facing dog and then move back into downward facing dog. We're going to open up the body a little bit. So inhale your right foot up as high as you want to go. When it's gone as high as it can, then open up the hip. Try to keep your shoulders squared off as you bring your right heel back towards your hips. Lift up that knee. Continue to open up that hip. Maybe if you want, you can do some circles while it's open. Continuing to open up the body, enjoying that openness. Inhale, bring your knee to nose. Inhale, rise your leg up as high as it will go. Inhale, knee to right elbow. Exhale, bring it up as high as it wants to go. Inhale, right knee to left elbow. Bring it up as high as you want to go. Inhale, knee to nose, and bring it all the way through. Rise up in Dhanjaneyasana. And then exhale, bring your hands down to heart center. As you are in Anjaneyasana, make sure the leg behind you is strong and straight, bending your right leg more deeply to create extension along this hip. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, fold your body over your right leg and twist to the right, clipping your left elbow on the outside of your right knee. Starting to fold into this twist, drawing the crown of your head forward, Drawing your right hip back, crunching at the core. If you want, go ahead and open it up. Take another inhale. Exhale, bring hands to heart center, rising up the body. Take an exhale. Inhale our hands up. And then exhale, circle our hands down, 
Moving back into plank pose again, lowering Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale into upward facing dog. Exhale, moving back into downward facing dog. Stretch out your dog as much as you want. Make it nice and long, allowing space for your heart center to move towards your legs. Take a nice inhale. Fully exhale. Inhale, your left leg up as high as it will go. And when it has gone no further, then open up the hip. Try to keep your shoulders squared towards the mat. Lift your left knee as you draw your left heel back. Maybe you want to do circles with the leg to open up that hip a little bit more. And then inhale, lift up that left leg. Exhale, bring me your nose. Inhale, lift up that left leg. Exhale, bring left knee to left elbow. Inhale, lift up that left leg. Exhale, cross the body, left knee to right elbow. Inhale, lift up that leg. Exhale, knee to nose. Bring it all the way through. And then inhale, rise up. Exhale, circle the hands down. Bringing hands to the heart center. Check your lunge right now. Make sure your right leg behind you is strong and straight as you bend your left leg very deeply. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, draw the torso down to your left leg, twist to the right, clip your right elbow over your left knee, and then twist to, did I say twist to the right, twist to the left. Drawing your core in, drawing the crown of your head forward as you bring your left hip back. If you want to, open it up. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, bring your hands together again. Rise up. Inhale. Exhale the hands down and then inhale them up. Exhale, circle your hands down on either side of your left foot. Bring left foot back to join the right lower. Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale into upward facing dog. Exhale, moving back into downward facing dog. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, move your hips back. Take an inhale. Exhale, drop the knees. Place big toes together. Widen your knees. And move in to child's pose. Take this moment, if it has become a little broken, to reconnect with your breath. Child's pose is a reminder to us that we have options to help us balance our energies. A lot of times we exert strongly in yoga, and that's good for cleansing. This practice has probably helped you cleanse away a lot of impurities, perhaps a lot of anxieties, a lot of things that are just clouding you up, help, you know, preventing you from feeling at your most, bogging you down. But we do raise the heart rate in order to accomplish that. So sometimes we need to bring things back down a little bit into balance. Some people ask, do we need more than yoga? Do we need more, say, aerobic activities other than yoga? It's a mixed conversation. <laughs> this kind of practice is very invigorating, very much raises the heart rate that makes it aerobic. If every practice was like this, maybe not. And what I do is I mix my practices up all week long. I don't do a practice like this every day. I do a practice like this two or three times a week. And then I balance it out with gentle yoga, chair yoga, meditation. But yes, I keep moving all the time. Frequent walks. I used to distance run, but I don't have time these days. And it's winter time. So I'm also honoring what the body wants to do because it is winter time. Take a nice inhale. Fully exhale. Inhale, rise up. Before we go into our standing poses, I would really like to do some deep knee bending. So let's move into hero pose. 
Now, if you choose to lay back fully in hero, then I invite you to do so. I don't take that variation for my body type. It just doesn't do well with it, never has. Here I've been practicing yoga for goodness, well over 15 years. And that portrait hasn't changed because we all have variations in our body that we have to consider. Again, think of brahmacharya, think of the value of ahimsa, do no harm. Think of the value of non-competition. So we may see poses that look really inviting to try and do because others can do them with such ease. I teach a class in the park and these people, all of them can lay completely down in hero and do reclined hero. But I know if I do that, I'm gonna have sciatic pain for the next several, several days possibly. <laughs> because I have mobile sacroiliac joints, and that's a function of different things, genetics, aging, uh, kind of having hypermobility in the joints in general. Um, so I honor that and I respect that. Okay, so we've sat in Hero for a good long time. Let's talk about the benefits of Hero. This is a nice deep knee bending pose. Deep knee bending poses are good for bringing synovial fluid to the joints and also for increasing the flexibility of all those surrounding ligaments and soft tissues, reducing your risk of injury. So it both strengthens the joint and helps you make the joint more flexible. And it helps stretch out your feet. If you find this difficult, you can always back out of it. You can always sit on a block or on a bolster. You don't have to take this deep form with the sit bones on the ground. Take a nice inhale. Fully exhale. And let's move out of that. Let's move up into Tadasana one more time. And I'm gonna take one more sip. Boy, is my throat dry today. A combination of cold air, heater on, moving vigorously in our yoga routine this morning. So actually, let's take Tadasana with me facing the camera now. We're gonna move into a series of uh, standing poses. Let's start out first. Uh, with warrior three. I'm gonna turn slightly to the side so that you can see my body's movement as we move into it. So inhale the hands up, draw the shoulders down, place your hands together and create the church and steeple where you interlace your fingers, have your index fingers pointed up and your thumbs together. Lift up as high as you can, drawing your arm bones back in alignment with your ears or slightly behind them. Draw the belly button in, allow your tailbone to take down, to tap down rather, or tack down. Inhale, lift up the heart center, lift up the crown. On your exhale, move your weight to your left foot and take your right foot back. Still standing in that nice tall tadasana, but it's like you are doing it on just one leg. Your right leg is not holding the weight. Take a nice inhale. On your exhale, lift up your leg as you move your heart center forward. Lift up and out of your left hip so that you don't sink your weight into it. And draw your hands forward as you bring your right foot back. Take an inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, bring your hands down to heart center. So you will have felt your heart rate lift up on that. That pose is sometimes called heart attack pose to prevent future heart attacks. <laughs> so I'm gonna remain in this posture so that you can see now the movement when we balance on the right leg and see the left leg be the one that lifts up. So inhale our hands overhead, lace your fingers in the opposite direction as they were the first time. Why do we do this? It forces us to think in a balanced way in the brain. It forces us to use the other side. Lift up the heart center, allow your tailbone to tap down, draw your arm bones back in alignment with your ears or slightly behind. Shift your weight over to the right leg. Again, it's as if you're in a one-legged tadasana. Left leg is behind you, but not holding the weight. Inhale, lift up the heart center. Exhale, start to bring the heart center forward. 
I have to adjust my right foot. Bring your heart center forward as you lift up your left leg. Keep your right hip lifted, lifting up and out of the hip so that you're not sinking your weight into it. Draw the hands forward as you bring your right foot back, or your left foot back. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more inhale. Exhale. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, bring your hands down and back to heart center, catch your breath. So that really is quite, you probably felt that in your shoulders, in the core, in the legs, heart rate lifting. So let's now move into something a little lighter, a little funner. <laughs> Try our, uh, let's move into tree pose, briskasana. So, and tree pose, same principles that we just described. We are in Tadasana, but we are on one leg. So bend, move, shift your weight to your left leg like we did on the first one, starting with the left. Bend the right knee and turn that leg out. You can have your toes on the floor. You can have your toes pointed towards the floor, but lifted off. You can have your right foot wrapped around your calf. You can bring it all the way to the top. There is one fourth variation where you take what is a lotus in a standing position, but that requires very open hips. So I prefer to teach this version. Push your right foot into your left leg to create stability. As you are standing here, continue to lift up the heart center, draw the shoulders down. <laughs> Notice how I'm playing a little bit with my own balance. Draw the belly button in. Create space for your tailbone to drop down slightly. Then raise up your arms. In tree pose, you are rooting into the floor, growing out of those roots up your tree trunk, which is your leg, continuing to grow up that tree trunk, which is the middle of your back or the middle of your body, your, your core. And then your arms are like the tree limbs. Your fingers are like the leaves drawing nourishment from the sun, rising up as high as they can, drawing the crown up, drawing the heart center up, allowing your shoulders to drop back down. Take a nice inhale. Exhale. Inhale, drop your hands down, or exhale, drop your hands down. Drop your right leg down. Shake it out. So next side. Easy side, made easier if you smile. Again, taking Tadasana on the right leg. So setting up our foundation on our right leg, bend our left knee, turn it to the left, draw our foot in against the right ankle. Initially, you can choose this one where the toes are touching the floor. You can lift your toes off the floor wrapping your foot around your ankle. You can wrap your foot around your calf muscle, or you can bring your foot all the way up to the top of the leg. To create stability, lift up the crown, lift up the heart, press your left foot into the right leg, right leg into the foot. This also encourages further opening of the hip. Using your right foot to root down into the earth, drawing energy up through the leg, through the center of the body, which are your tree trunk. And then raise your hands up. Your arms are the limbs of the tree. Your fingers are the leaves. Reaching for the sun, grabbing nourishment from the sun. Drawing the shoulders down, lifting up the heart center, creating as much stability as you can in this tree pose. Take one more inhale. Exhale, circle your hands down into prayer with control. Drop that left leg and shake it out. Ah, so one last fun set of standing poses. 
that I like to take. Let's take dancer today. I often like to take balancing half moon, but we didn't do a triangle series today. So it's not as natural to move into it. I'm going to turn again my body slightly to my right so that you can see how the body opens up. So balance your energy or balance your strength on your left leg again, lifting up and out of that left hip, reach back and grab your right foot. You can grab your ankle, you can grab your foot. I recommend grabbing it from the inside of the foot. So my palm of my hand and the sole of my foot are touching. Initially draw the knees together, draw the shoulders back and down, create like this nice strong Tadasana, but you're on one leg holding your right foot in your right hand. Then raise your left arm overhead and start to tilt the body forward as you lift up your right leg. Go as far as feels great to you. Extending as far as you feel you can. Take a nice inhale and then exhale. Return back, lower the left hand down, drop your right leg. You can do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to maintain this position so that you can see it from that side. So reach back, balance on the right leg, reach back and grab your left foot. Again, the left palm is touching the left sole of the foot. You can adjust however you need to. If you need to be on the outside, you can. You just can't open as much when you do that. But sometimes the shoulder doesn't want to rotate that way. My left shoulder is slightly different than my right in that I have injured it and dislocated it several times. So I'm very attentive to how this shoulder opens up. Lift up and out of that right hip, draw your knees together initially, creating a Tadasana stance on this one leg. So you should feel very stable right now. Take your right arm up overhead alongside your right ear, and then take a nice inhale, lifting up the heart center. And then on your exhale, bring the heart forward as you bring your left foot back. Extend as much as you choose in this pose. Inhale, exhale. One more inhale. Exhale, returning back with control. Drop our hands, drop our left foot, shake it out. Doesn't that feel wonderful? And let's take one wide leg of forward fold to continue our journey of opening up these hips as well. So let's inhale our hands initially into star. Draw the shoulders down, lift up the crown of the head. Take your hands to your hips. Take a nice inhale, drawing the shoulders up, drawing the elbows back. And then exhale, move your heart center forward, lifting up your sit bones. Continue to move the heart center forward as you fold down, keeping your spine as straight as you can, leading with the heart. And then when your hands arrive at the floor, continue to draw the heart center down. You can make your stance as wide as you want or as narrow as you want. Again, it's your yoga practice. Balance your energies in the way that works for you. Continue to move the heart center down, opening up the back of the legs, perhaps drawing your crown to the floor. If you want to, you can reach for each of your toes and you can draw your elbows away from the body, drawing your shoulder blades together close to the spine as you fold forward. When our head is upside down, we see the world in a different perspective. So inversions are wonderful for teaching us to do that. Take a nice inhale. Exhale if you can, fold more deeply. Drawing from the core, drawing the shoulders together as you fold deeply in. Lifting up your sit bones to the sky. Take an inhale. See if you can fold even more deeply. Inhale. Exhale. Gently release out of that. 
move into a flat spine to start. Take your hands to your hips, fully exhale, and then inhale, rise up in one movement. Exhale, release your hands and bring your feet together. <laughs> Let's take Malasana. We're gonna use that to move into our final poses of the day. So Malasana is garland pose. This is a wonderful, wonderful pose for opening up our hips, strengthening the pelvis, releasing pressure from the lower back if we've been dumping a little bit too much into the lower spine, strengthening the upper body because you, plus, you place your hands together and you use isometric toning, draw your shoulders down, drawing the crown up. All of this strengthens the core. This is a pose that if you can, I recommend taking it daily if you can. You can do twists in this pose. You can use this as your launch to move into arm balances such as crow. Um, there are so much that you can do in this pose. Take a nice inhale, lift up your heart center. And then on your exhale, place your hands behind you and just sit back on your bottom and take Baddha Konasana or Bound Angle Pose. Placing your feet together, allow your knees to fall out, lifting up your heart center, drawing your shoulders down. So if you find yourself rounding in this pose or you feel your shoulders rolling forward, you can move your hands back to your ankles, which allows you then once again to focus on the alignment and opening up your energy channels and your breathing channels. See how close you can get your feet to the pelvis. And can you use isometric energy by pushing your feet together to push your knees down? Feeling the engagement of the muscles underneath the ones surrounding the sacrum. See if you can bring them together and hug your sacrum. Hug your tailbone with those muscles. Engage your mulabandha, your root lock. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, lift up the heart center as you draw the knees down. Take another inhale. And then exhale, move your feet forward. And let's fold over them, opening up the backs of our hips, placing our hands around our toes, drawing our heart center forward. Let's have a nice, beautiful lower back stretch here. <sighs> Inhale, rise up. Let's keep our left foot in front as we move into pigeon pose. So just take your right foot behind you. I love moving into pigeon pose from already a position on the floor. And then just find your way into pigeon there by drawing your right leg behind you and drawing your right foot perhaps a little closer to your left foot, closer to your right hip. Initially, let's start off just lifting up the heart center. And then on your exhale, start to move your heart center forward over that left leg and start to extend out into your pigeon. So you can take your arm positions that work for you. You can have your arm straight ahead. Many people love that and enjoy that. My shoulders don't always enjoy that. So I take the variation where I'm still moving my heart forward, but I just allow my elbows to be wherever I want them to be. So I can have, I can focus on drawing my body close to my leg and extending, you know, opening up this hip, this left hip behind me. And where my arms are doesn't really have anything to do with that extension. You can increase that extension by engaging muscle energy of drawing your right hip forward as you bring your left hip back. So that energy of drawing your left hip away from your shoulders by rotating the pelvis in a way definitely changes this pose. So you can have active stretching or you can have passive stretching. That makes it now a more active stretch.
there are variations you can take to make this even more bendy, if that's what your preference is. So I'm going to place my left arm in front and thread the needle of my right arm underneath my left and lay my right shoulder on the mat. I'm going to place my hands together in prayer pose. If you haven't taken this variation, you do not know how much this really calls to your left hip. <laughs> and then you can stay here for a few breaths. Allowing that hip to open up. And then if you want to increase the full body stretch, you can reach back, grab your right foot with your left hand and start to draw your left foot towards, or your right foot, I'm sorry, towards your right hip. So you're opening up that quadricep on the right side. Well, that's really important to open up the quads. You have to have open psoas and open quads for knee help, knee health and hip health. And also another little thing, if the psoas aren't open, you can have sciatica because there's this ligamenture and musculature that wraps from the front of the hip down the back of the hip. And so when you have constriction on the front, you're going to have constriction on the back. Look at some diagrams of the hips sometimes so that you can understand that. Gently release that. Bring your left arm out in front, raise your right arm up. Lift up in your pigeon again, and then place your left hand in front of your right leg and reach back and grab your right foot with your right hand. Now, if you want to, pivot your hand so that it's on top of your foot. You can also, oh, there we go. I've just moved my left foot on the outside, on my left hand on the outside of my left knee. And then just draw that foot again, opening up that right quad, draw that foot close to the buttock. Using this also as a shoulder opener when we rotate our hand on top of our foot. Gently release that, move back onto the left hip, bring your right foot around and let's take a twist. So place our right foot on the outside of our left leg, lift up nice and tall, place our right hand behind us, left arm up alongside our left ear, flip our left arm on the outside of our right knee and twist to the right. Take a nice inhale, exhale, moving that forward. Then we're gonna move into pigeon however you get there. So I'm placing my right leg on the floor, taking my left leg behind me. And now I'm in pigeon, ha ha. Draw our hands back towards our hips, lift up our heart center. And then exhale, fold your body over your right leg. and take the arm position that works best for you. Perhaps you want your arms out in front. If you find that that helps you and you like that, excellent. You can take your elbows off to the sides if you want. You can place your forehead on a block if you find laying across your leg this deeply in the pose to be difficult for you. This side is my tighter side. So this is a much more intensive stretch for me on this side than the other. And it's funny how some things never change. Here we are 15 years later in yoga and I can honestly say one side is not equal to the other. <laughs> it probably never will be. <laughs> we form these patterns of our nerves and our muscles and they are very difficult to change, honestly. A lot of it has to do with which side of the body is more dominant. It may have to do with histories of injury. 
And it may just have to do with anatomical differences one side to the other that we all have. Again, we honor those differences, we respect them. We try not to exploit the more open side at the risk of keeping the less open side from becoming stronger and more extended. If you want to join me, push your right arm in front and thread your left arm underneath your right, laying across your left shoulder. And if you want to further increase the stretch, Bend your left knee, reach back with your right hand and grab your left foot and draw your left foot, opening up your left quadricep close to your left hip. Release that, rise up with your right hand, placing it wherever works for you. I'm gonna start off this time with it on the outside of my right knee. Reach back with the left hand if you want and draw your left foot towards your left hip. Maybe swivel your hands on top of your left foot to open up that shoulder, stretch out the top of the foot and open up that quadricep and that foot. Take another inhale and then exhale, gently release that down. Sit back on your right hip, bring your left foot around. And setting up for seated twist. So place your left hand behind you, lift up your right arm alongside your right ear, clip your right elbow on the outside of your left knee and then twist to the left. Take another inhale, exhale, release that. And let's come out of these poses entirely and find our way into Shavasana. We have already been practicing for one hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> so let's lay back down and I will talk you through some mindful relaxation as you move into your deepest meditative state. So find the position you would like to be in, in your Shavasana. You might lift up your hips and wiggle them out to release any tension from them and allow your sacrum to have total contact with the floor. You can try to take Baddha Konasana. <coughs> Sorry, dry throat. So you can start with Baddha Konasana. That's one option. You can have your feet just on the floor with your hips or your knees bent. <coughs> or you can extend your legs out, allowing your feet to just kind of flail open, allowing the hips to gently open. You might create some space for your shoulders by drawing them a little bit underneath your back. Allow your fingers to curl, completely relaxed. Your palms facing the ceiling and start to scan the body. Feeling, drawing your attention towards the crown of your head, releasing any tension out of your scalp, at the top of your head, and then moving your attention down to your forehead, Relaxing all of the muscles across the forehead. Relaxing your eyebrows. Drawing your attention to your gently closed eyes, softening your eyelids over your eyes. 
allowing your eyes to fall deeply into their sockets, relaxing all of the muscles across the cheeks just under your eyes, relaxing your temples and the space above your ears, continuing your movement downward, relax the remainder of the muscles in your face and your jawline. Draw your attention towards your neck muscles. Relax the front and the back of the neck, allowing your head to lay, to fall deeply into the mat. Relax the shoulders and the collarbones. Allow the shoulders to fall down more into the mat. Relax all the muscles across the front of the chest. Relax your arms. Relax your ribs. Allow space between each of those ribs as they fall towards the floor. Relax your solar plexus muscles, allowing a little bit of a hollowing out of the belly. Relax your forearms, your hands, and your wrists. No tension held in any way in any of your fingers. Relax your hips deeply into the mat and continue that relaxation of your legs, the muscles above the knees, your kneecaps, your shins and your calves. Ultimately arriving at the ankles and your feet, relaxing all 10 of your toes. Continue to breathe softly, returning your heart rate and your respiration to normal. Allow yourself to fall into the deepest state of relaxation. Allow metaphysical forces to carry you away, to transport you to another place that's more calming, free, Stress. Allow yourself to float with that freedom. I invite you to lay here in Shavasana five minutes or longer. This is the most important time of your practice where you integrate all the benefits of your hard work. The light in me sees the light in you, the yogi in me, honors the yogi in you. Namaste. And thank you for joining me this morning. You can visit my YouTube channel, Kathleen Coombs Yoga. Have a beautiful day.